On a cold February evening, a young woman disappeared on her way to the bus stop. Her failed journey home marked the beginning of one of the most mysterious and grim stories, stretching over nearly four decades. The case remained unsolved, the traces of the perpetrator seemingly lost forever, and numerous attempts to find the guilty party led to dead ends. But technology, unimaginable in 1984, decades later shed light on the events of that fateful night. This story is not only about a tragic fate but also about how science, determination, and faith in justice can uncover the darkest secrets of the past. In this video, you will learn how the key to solving Mary Jane Thompson's case was found and how technology has transformed the very approach to solving crimes. Mary Jane Thompson seemed like a girl destined for a bright future. Born on October 5, 1962, in Houston, Texas, she grew up surrounded by a loving family that always supported her ambitious plans. Even in her school years, she was drawn to the world of fashion, inspired by glossy magazines, she dreamed of one day seeing her face on their covers. Her friends recall that Mary was not only beautiful but also determined. Her confidence and hard work set her apart from her peers. After graduating from high school, Mary decided to follow her dream and move to Los Angeles. The city of angels, the glamour of Hollywood, and fashion shows all of it beckoned her, but reality proved more challenging. Although she managed to participate in a few photo shoots, she had to work in a cafe and take on odd jobs to pay her rent. For about a year, she tried to break into the modeling industry but realized she needed additional skills to stand out among many equally ambitious young women. Mary then moved to Dallas, a city that offered her the opportunity to take acting classes, which she believed would be a new step in her career. Here, she juggled two jobs, waitressing at a local diner and working as a sales assistant in a small flower shop. Despite her exhausting schedule, she remained energetic and committed to her dream. Every day, she woke up early and returned home late at night, but her belief in success was unwavering. February 11, 1984, began like any other day for Mary. During a break between classes and work, she called her mother. During their conversation, she mentioned that she planned to visit a hospital later in the evening due to feeling slightly unwell. Her mother wished her luck, unaware this would be their last call. When Mary reached the hospital, its doors were already closed. She decided to wait for the bus to return home, but, as was later discovered, she never boarded it. At first, her disappearance didn't raise alarm. Her family was used to Mary being out of touch for a few days due to her busy schedule. Two days later, on February 13, 1984, a grim discovery was made on the outskirts of Dallas. Near old railway tracks, hidden behind warehouses, a passerby stumbled upon the body of a young woman. When detectives arrived at the crime scene, they were met with a horrifying sight. Marks of strangulation were visible on the woman's neck, and her face still reflected the terror of her final moments. Upon examining the victim's belongings, detectives found identification documents that quickly confirmed her identity. The victim was 21-year-old Mary Jane Thompson. The area where Mary's body was found was a desolate industrial zone at the time. Abandoned railroad tracks, boarded-up warehouse windows, silence, and the absence of people made it an ideal spot for someone wanting to conceal their crimes. Because of this isolation, Mary's body was discovered only two days after her disappearance. Forensic experts conducted a thorough examination of the body and concluded that death had occurred 36-48 hours before it was found. The cause of death was strangulation, the killer used the girl's own leg warmers. However, the horror didn't end with the murder Mary had been sexually assaulted. As a result, forensic scientists were able to collect biological samples that could later prove crucial. But in 1984, forensic science lacked the DNA analysis technology needed to identify the perpetrator. Nonetheless, the police were obligated to preserve the evidence. Law enforcement leadership understood that technology would improve over time, and such evidence could become decisive. The biological material was stored in a laboratory facility, where it was safeguarded in case the case took a new turn. Examining the crime scene, detectives concluded that the warehouse district was deliberately chosen by the killer. The warehouse near which Mary's body was found was about five kilometers from the hospital she had been heading to that evening. It was a remote area with no foot traffic, making it an ideal hiding spot. Detectives began reconstructing the timeline of events based on accounts from Mary's friends and family. They believed that Mary, upon finding the hospital doors closed, headed to the nearest bus stop. It was likely there that the perpetrator attacked her. He might have subdued her quickly and forcibly dragged her into a vehicle. 
He then drove her to the industrial area, where he decided to dispose of her. The police suspected that the killer knew the area like the back of his hand. His choice of location for both the attack and the disposal of the body appeared deliberate. These streets were not even frequented by local workers, making them all the more dangerous for an unsuspecting passerby. Detectives theorized that the murderer could have been a truck driver, a warehouse employee, or someone who visited the area frequently. Investigators sought to find any lead. They decided to check all previously convicted men who lived or worked nearby. However, this approach yielded no results. Interrogations and surveillance failed to identify anyone linked to the murder. In those years, detectives faced significant limitations that made solving such cases extremely difficult. In Mary Jane Thompson's case, there wasn't a single witness who could recall seeing her that fateful evening. No one saw her board a bus, exit one, or even stand at the stop. The streets where she vanished had no surveillance cameras such devices were used in 1984 only in particularly busy parts of the city or near banks and stores. The lack of evidence, witnesses, and surveillance footage meant that investigators had no leads to pursue. After several months of active but fruitless searches, the case was on the verge of being closed. Eventually, it was handed over to the cold case unit and office tasked with periodically reviewing unsolved murders in the hope of breakthroughs through technological advancements. For Mary's family, however, this meant years of waiting and uncertainty. Then, 25 years later, in 2009, the Dallas Police Department decided to revisit the case. By that time, forensic science had made significant progress, offering investigators new tools, including DNA analysis technologies. Experts extracted a DNA sample from the biological material found on Mary Jane's body and checked it against national databases. Unfortunately, the search yielded no results. No individual with that genetic code was listed among those previously arrested for serious crimes. This suggested two possibilities, either the perpetrator had never been caught for any crime, or their arrest occurred during a time when DNA samples were not collected from detainees. Police understood that solving such cases could take decades. A chance remained if the perpetrator committed another crime, their DNA could be entered into the database, leading to a match. The next major push in the case came nine years later, in 2018. This time, Detective Noah Camacho, who specialized in cold cases, took the initiative. Recognizing that standard police methods had failed, he sought assistance from an independent organization dedicated to solving violent crimes. This organization also developed new tools and technologies for tackling such cases. Camacho and his colleagues worked hard to draw attention to Mary Jane's case and secure additional resources for DNA analysis. However, it took another two years of persistent effort before the FBI became involved. By 2020, the Bureau had accumulated an extensive archive of unsolved cases involving DNA samples, yet none had led to identifying suspects. Around this time, a breakthrough occurred in forensic science the development of genetic genealogy methods. This technology became a powerful tool in solving cold cases. It uses advanced equipment to analyze the DNA of an unknown individual and then compares it to genealogical databases designed for locating relatives. There are several ways investigators might gain access to DNA data. First, if a relative of the perpetrator had been arrested, their DNA samples could have been entered into FBI or other law enforcement databases. Second, many people voluntarily submit their biological material to commercial services to trace relatives, determine ethnic origins, or build family trees. These genealogical platforms, such as GEDmatch, have grown especially popular in recent years, significantly expanding detectives' investigative capabilities. In the case of Mary Jane Thompson's murder, genetic genealogy technology proved to be the decisive factor. The process was lengthy and meticulous. Initially, experts used the perpetrator's DNA to locate distant relatives in one of the genealogical databases. However, this was just the first step. What lay ahead was extensive work involving the study of hundreds, if not thousands, of people's biographies to determine who among them might be connected to the murder. To do this, investigators considered various factors, the suspect's potential age, their residence at the time of the crime, their mobility, and any ties to the area where the murder occurred. Yet, even after thorough analysis, the databases do not provide direct evidence they merely point to a possible pool of relatives. Investigators must then find a way to obtain DNA samples from those who fit their suspicions. By 2022, experts identified a suspect in Mary Jane Thompson's murder. 
His name was Edward Morgan, a 60-year-old Dallas resident. Police carefully examined his background and discovered that in 1984, he lived just one kilometer from the crime scene. At the time of the murder, he was 22 years old and matched all the key parameters. The operation to confirm their suspicions was conducted with great caution. Detectives arranged surveillance on Morgan to obtain an item that could carry his biological traces a coffee cup, a discarded napkin, or a water bottle. This was one of the most critical stages of the investigation. Once a sample was secured, forensic scientists conducted a comparative analysis, and the results were conclusive. Edward Morgan's DNA was a perfect match with the DNA found on Mary Jane Thompson's body. The arrest took place in February 2022. Edward Morgan, who had spent his entire life evading justice, was finally in the hands of the law. He was charged with first-degree murder and is currently in custody awaiting trial. Bail was set at half a million dollars. As of now, no verdict has been issued, as the investigation appears to be ongoing. This case serves as a powerful example of how determination by detectives, modern technology, and the pursuit of justice can, even decades later, restore a victim's name and bring the guilty to account. The arrest of Edward Morgan became a major event, but the police have so far managed to keep most details about his background confidential. These details are expected to emerge during the trial, where a full picture of his life and possible motives will be presented. However, one fact is undeniable, the biological sample found on Mary Jane Thompson's body matched Morgan's DNA completely. This match eliminates any possibility of error, making it the primary and indisputable piece of evidence in the case. At a press conference held shortly after the arrest, investigators expressed confidence that Morgan would be found guilty and brought to justice. In the state of Texas, first-degree murder, especially when accompanied by violence, carries the ultimate penalty death. While the trial is still ahead, detectives made it clear that the evidence against the accused is more than sufficient. Unfortunately, for Mary Jane's family, long-awaited justice has come too late. Her father, who fought for years to keep his daughter's case open, passed away in 2020 without ever learning the name of her killer. Mary's mother had died even earlier, never seeing the day when justice would prevail. The only close relative who lived to hear the news was Mary's sister. The message from the police was both a shock and a relief for her. After 38 years of investigation, a detective personally called to inform her that the killer had been arrested and the case might soon be resolved. On social media, she had often posted on Mary's birthday, writing about her love for her sister and her promise never to give up hope for justice. Following Edward Morgan's arrest, Mary's sister made a public statement wishing for him to spend the rest of his life behind bars. She also vowed to attend every court session to ensure that justice would be served. Her resilience and commitment to justice have become a symbol of the unwavering hope that sustained the Thompson family for decades. Mary Jane Thompson's case, solved 38 years later thanks to the persistence of detectives and cutting-edge technology, serves as a significant lesson for future generations. It proves that the truth can be uncovered even decades later and that science, combined with human determination, can overcome the barriers of time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.